All right, here we go. Welcome to episode seven. Today is September 1st, also known as my 40th birthday. Happy birthday, Nick. Thank you very welcome, much. Welcome I, to the 40 year old club. Welcome to the 40 club. It sucks. I, <laughs> turn back. <laughs> turn back as fast as you can, man. <laughs> if I could turn back time, I, I wouldn't do it any other way. No, thank you, Cher. <laughs> um, how you doing today, Jeff? It's Friday. I'm doing we got great. Jobs, we got stuff to do. Friday, the last, uh, the last half day of the summer for me at work. So, I'm gonna go out and enjoy that today. But um, yeah, excited for a talk today. I like that we're number seven, uh, the episode number seven, and we uh, are talking about Mickey Mantle today a little bit. So, I think that's pretty Afro Pro there. I like it. Right. I am. I am big on it. We are gonna start with mound visits. All right. Uh, Jeff, of course, if you're listening to us on Spotify, Jeff is wearing a Torrance Tartar hat. That's right. And so the schools in Torrance are the Warriors, the Spartans, the Saxons, and the Tartars. And a Tartar is and the Knights. Well, don't don't forget Bishop Montgomery, the Knights. How could I forget? That's where I went to school. <laughs> um, a Tartar is a member of any of the various tribes, chiefly Mongolian and Turkish, who mm. originally under Genghis Khan overran Asia and must, much of Eastern Europe in the Middle Ages. Yep, that sounds about right. At least that's what I got from the uh, from the logo here. It looks looks about right, like a Mongolian warrior. So Right. I, I just had to clear that up because if anybody's listening to us and says, what is a Tartar? We got to <laughs> know. Which is what I did when my kid got to high school. What in the it, world is a Tartar? Yeah. <laughs> um, the Bad News Bears field is still used. It is used for West LA Little League, not Adult mm -hmm. League play. I'm not sure if it is. I can look more into that. Um, but the cross streets are Sepulveda in Ohio. Sepulveda in Ohio. Okay. I know where that's at. Yeah. I know where that's at. Uh, they used to live, yeah, not that far job, Yeah, not that far. Buttermaker's job in Bad News Bears 2, he was pest control and a vermin trapper. A vermin trapper. That's great. Vermin trapper. Vermin trapper. You don't hear that much. I never heard that job. Vermin trapper. <laughs> I hear vermin a lot when I think of uh, Yosemite Sam. And, yeah, uh, Looney Tunes. <laughs> right. Uh, did you know that Matthew McConaughey's first movie was Dazed and Confused? Uh, I think I did know that, actually. Yeah, I think I did know that. Such a, he's so good in that movie. That's just the <laughs> he steals he every everything he's in. That's a too bad. There's no sports in that. Well, I guess there's a little bit of sports in that one. There's base, a little bit of there's baseball in that movie. <laughs> there is baseball in that movie. <laughs> there is baseball in Dazed and Confused. And then um. Of course, we talked about the Pacific Coast League, two of the most well-known alumni of the PCL are Ted Williams mm -hmm. and Jolton Joe DiMaggio. That's right. What do you got for mountain visits, Jeff? Um, I would just, the only one that I have is that, yeah, I had my dates wrong. It was not 1998 on the first Cubs night game. It was, it, you were right. 1988. I don't know. I must, I don't know if I wrote it down wrong. Cause I couldn't find 98 anywhere. I must've, I must've just wrote it down wrong. So I, I mound visit myself there. So, um, yeah, that, uh, you were correct. Was it eight, um, crap. No, I forgot. It was it eight, eight, 88 or nine, eight, 88. I think something like that against the New York metropolitans. That's right. That, that was all I had. Everything else was, I think we did pretty good. I feel like last week was a good episode. And on to this week. All right. We are talking about the movie 61, directed by Billy Crystal, starring Barry Pepper as Mr. Roger Maris. Uh, you had a couple of lower names sprinkled in. Thomas Jane as Mickey Mantle did an exceptional job. Anthony Michael Hall as Whitey Ford. Uh, you know him from The Breakfast Club. And uh, he was... Rusty in the National Lampoon movies. That's right. Uh, Richard Maser as uh, one of the journalists. He was the dad in My Girl, and he also played the dad in Encino Man. Did he really? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I haven't seen Encino Man in so long. <laughs> it was Sean Sean Astin's dad. That's right. In Encino Man. How long will this young man be staying with us? Well, and um, uh, license to drive, right? Do you remember? A, like, I, I don't know that one. Oh, um, well, gotta watch that. Christopher McDonald, who eats pieces of shit like you for breakfast. That's right. Was Shooter. Matt Allen. Um, How Bob about Gutton, that? Yeah, Bob Gutton as the Yankees owner president. We know him from Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. But he is also in the next movie we will be talking about. Um, 
And then, of course, directed by Billy Crystal, who directed Forget Paris, where he is a NBA referee. Referee, right? Uh, no. I never saw that. Very good movie. Is it? Um, and he did Comic Relief with Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams. And the connection to the Rookie of the Year movie is that he was in City Slickers with Daniel Stern. There you go. Love City Slickers. That's one of very my that's a, hilarious. That's a Although I watched it with my kids, they didn't quite find it as funny. It's not. I don't think it held up as well. Anyway, that's that's topic for another another uh, podcast. But I mean, early early nineties were definitely a lot different than they are now. So Although speaking that, of City Slickers, we start off the conversation here. I actually have a note about that. Didn't he in City Slickers? He wore a Mets hat. And here is all about the Yankees, and he's a Yankees fan from what I, all I from what I understand. But in he's a New York Slickers, kind of guy, it was a Mets hat, which I feel is a no no. I mean, you you won't catch me wearing a Giants hat, and I'm sure most Dodger fans are all Dodger fans. They're not going to be caught dead wearing an Angel hat. I found that weird. Uh, that Mets fan, I guess, or maybe they made him wear it. It made me think of um, uh, Ben Affleck and Gone Girl when um, he wore a. Um, they wanted him to wear a Yankees hat and he refused. He straight up refused. I think it shut down production for like two days and uh, he refused to wear it. And he said, I'll wear a Boston hat. They said, no, it doesn't make sense. We're not in Boston. And uh, they, they agreed on a Mets hat. He, he compromised to wear a Mets hat. I mean, if you got to compromise between going against something that's going to make your skin burn right. and making the movie, it, I think, I think Ben Affleck, as much as, you know, we can talk about his movies too, Days and Confused, again, confused. Um, it's just one of those things, like, you can't do that. So, according to a uh, internet movie database, most of this movie was filmed at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, this movie is not for children. It is not something that I recommend you let your children watch, especially an opening scene watch. where Mickey Mantle is talking about a woman saying, oh, my hands are pretty small. And <laughs> that was, a, <laughs> yeah, I watched that with my daughter and my son. I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, do they, do I need to stop and talk about this? Uh, we'll just keep, we'll just push it on, pretend nobody heard it. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's just, <laughs> let's just figure that out. Come on. Um, I'm yeah. blown up. I want to, uh, I, I take, I want to take a little umbrage with what you said a second ago. Lesser, lesser stars in Thomas Jane. I think not, my friend. Thomas Jane was, I feel like, in the early 2000s. Wasn't this around when he was really hitting it big? I feel like he, he was, was in, the main um, star of it, don't you think? He was, uh, what are you just Thomas coming Jane off? Thomas of Jane was very good, but he was only in, the only thing that I saw him in was Buffy the Vampire Slayer that I right? that I could recall was that, seeing. Was this before, like, Deep Blue Sea and remember that shark movie with Samuel Jackson? And um, This was filmed, this was a 2000 and... 2001, this right? This a movie filmed in 2000. 2000 so yeah it came out in 2001 so it was pre 9 11 i can't remember when all that when that shark movie came out um yeah released in 2001 yeah which was this one or great uh deep blue sea this one right 61 was released in 2001 we can look at deep blue sea for mound visits for next week yeah i but, feel like um, thomas jane was a pretty was was the headliner here in my opinion or I, he may not have the bigger role but i feel like he was probably the bigger name at that time although i thought barry pepper did was really good in this movie Barry Pepper was amazing. He is, you know, him in Saving Private Ryan, you know, another another link to another baseball movie with Tom Hanks. Um, what did you think about 61, Jeff? I really liked it. I really liked this movie. Um, you know, I liked the way that um, it, I really liked the way it was shot. I think that was the main thing that stood out for me. Um you know, the way that it was, they used gra computer graphics, uh, you could tell on the, obviously in the background, I was, I was, you know, 20 some odd years ago, so they weren't quite as good, but, you know, for that time, I thought it looked really good. The shots were really well, the baseball scenes were, I thought, really well done. It looked like people could really hit, the balls were going, you know, the right places when they were hit. Um, you know, and I really, I really thought that the scene, the action scenes, it felt different. Obviously the color, they did a different color to make it look old timey. But it seemed to me that the action scenes of the players, uh, especially in the field, they were shot a little closer, a little tighter. So you really got a more intimate feel of them being on the field and chasing down fly balls and throwing it in and everything. So I really like that, um, uh, that part of the game, uh, so the movie, sorry. Um, and also just, it was good. I really liked the beginning because it, it started out with, you know, I, I've mentioned this before, Mark McGuire, that chase in 98. Like I paused the movie immediately and I broke down exactly like for my daughter, my son, like, 
you understand in 1998 like this this captured america like this was the story of that summer i remember it vividly um i remember watching it in my uh, apartment in san francisco um you know him breaking that record like I, it was he was my favorite player at that time it was special for me to watch him i had seen watch been watching him for you know what uh 10 plus years at that point um and just seeing him break the record and him being able to be above sammy sosa that whole time and being the one to get to 70 that year um you know i really thought that was really special i know it didn't turn out to be because of the steroid use and everything but you know at that time it, it just really captivated and it really almost saved baseball and so like i said i, I paused and i explained all of this um to my kids who you know didn't really have any idea about that but you know it, it really did save baseball i mean that's what they you know claim it really brought it back up after the strike of 94 and you know and you know i'm always i always say if i was a commissioner let them do steroids man who cares <laughs> did nobody like seeing 70 home runs a year was that a bad thing like <laughs> oh bummer mark mcguire just hit a 550 foot home run well that really sucked i really wish i would have seen him <laughs> single and steal a base like <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm always a big fan. Let, let them let them meet those roids. Let the pitchers do it too, man. Let them let's see 108 and 500 and plus home runs. So, uh, but yeah, I, dig, I really like this dig movie. the long ball, Jeff. Exactly, dig exactly. the long ball. I I really like this movie. I thought it was really well done. Billy Crystal did a really good job. I think. Um, I thought the acting was was pretty good. I thought Barry Pepper did a really good job. Thomas Jane. I've never been a huge fan of his. He's he did fine. I guess he was okay. Um, as as Mickey Mantle. But um, yeah, I thought it was it was a really good uh, it was a really good movie. Captured the time, um, you know the, the wardrobe was great. Um, it really captured the time of the uh, of the you know the early sixties there. What about you? I really liked it. So I remember when it came out. You know, I'm a big baseball history guy, and so this was something for me when it came out. I was like, all right, cool. Why is there an asterisk? I had no idea why there was an asterisk. I think at the time when it did come out, I was six 17 18 and so i don't think i gave it much of a thought i started it i don't think i stopped it i couldn't get into it at that time but then i revisited it once i was going through hbo recently thinking wow i how did i miss this movie i've seen a lot of baseball movies let's give it a try and yeah. so i think this was the movie that got me thinking let's start a podcast <laughs> let me see who is interested in starting a podcast um the actual footage in this movie that they used off of Maguire's 60th and 61st home run with Joe Buck on the call for mm -hmm. 60 and John Miller on the call for 61 to me stands out because you're using actual stuff that happened yeah. just a couple of years before. I mean, Maguire hit, what was it? I did some research. He hit 60, he hit more than 60 twice in his career. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, if he remained untainted, he would have been in the Hall of Fame. Hundred percent. The guy was a stud. Um, he should be in the Hall of Fame anyway. I, I, I'm I'm a big believer and put him in. They, you know what I mean? And Bonds, who cares? Put him in. It's part of the game. They did amazing feats. I don't care what they say. That is hard to do, <laughs> whether you're on steroids or not. Like, even with the look, even with the steroids, he only beat it by they only beat it by like ten. So I mean. You know what I mean? I let him in the Hall of Fame. Who cares? Let people just enjoy it. Jeez. Um, when the reporters are on the field and they're talking about Maris being the best right fielder in the game. So today in 1971 was the first year that any team had an all-colored lineup. Oh. And it was the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, oh. So I wanted to throw that history in there because – this is huge. They're talking about the about Maris being the best right fielder in the league. And this goes back to how the media viewed players of color. Because we all know that Maris's career only spanned 12 years. Mm -hmm. He won the MVP twice. Mm -hmm. But the best right fielder in the league, talent, arm, bat, Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente, Shout right? Shout out of a yeah. doubt. In my mind, the best right fielder in the league at that time and for a long time has been Clemente. Um, you know, they had Bob Shepard in here and him on the PA is spectacular. Um, yeah, Matt Maris's career, 12 years. Uh, he had yeah. 141 RBIs and he hit 269 in that 61 year. 
a career 260 hitter, 275 RBIs. The most home runs he hit were 39 in 60, and he hit 62 in 33. Um, did you know that you know that Roger Maris played for the A's, but did mm-hmm. you know where he ended his career? Uh, no. In all places, he ended his career in St. Louis. Oh, there you go. Look at that. And then Mark McGuire. And then Mark McGuire. <laughs> Yeah, Maris had a fascinating career. It is really interesting, you know, not in the Hall of Fame. I'm like, when I when I thought I'm like, not in the Hall of Fame, and I looked his stats up, like, oh, yeah, that's he's not really a Hall of Fame player. It's pretty crazy. Two MVPs. Who do you know who the only uh, you should know this? Who only other player not in the Hall of Fame with two MVPs? Dale Murphy. Dale Murphy. And Dale Murphy won rookie of the year, I believe, right? Dale Murphy was one of the best hitting players of his era. Yeah. And alongside Don Mattingly, never won a title and is still on the outside looking in outside looking in yeah that's crazy you know two mvps um i did you know i went on baseball reference and just kind of looked at comparable players in terms of war um 38.3 i mean that's on line with eric chavez eric chavez you know an old old oakland a who never won an mvp i never made an all-star team either for that matter won six gold gloves in a row i believe uh i think believe it was six um, but, um, you know, that's kind of shows you where he's at and just kind of similar players in terms of production, Jay Buhner, Eric Davis, Danny Tartabal, Josh Donaldson, all have kind of fall in that area, which, you know, those are, those are definitely good players, but none of them hall of fame. There's one, you know, Josh Donaldson won an MVP. I don't think Eric Davis did, um, he won rookie of the year maybe, but, uh, um, Davis, Eric Davis held his hands. Yeah. Really right. Like right low. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just talking with a, a friend, my friend Tony, about that yesterday when we went to the ball game. Yeah, so it's just crazy to, that you, when you really look into that. That guy is, you know, he really just he had an incredible three year run. It really was a, a pretty much unparalleled. Um, a three year run for somebody where he hit, you know, what he hit this the sixty one homers and he only hit two seventy five total. I mean, that's like you know what a, a eighth, the seventh of it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's crazy. It, it really, his trajectory, it, it it really stands out those three years. Makes you wonder, is he on juice or something? Hmm, maybe he's on steroids. <laughs> but, uh, With all those cigarettes he was smoking, yeah, it's possible. He loaded them up, oh, yeah. Oh, man. That was Dude, crazy. Was like you know, every, yeah, you just feel for the guy, right? Up a cigarette, yeah. yeah. Feel for the you guy. Have to feel the for death threats that he got, you know, that was, that, that, this sucked. I mean, I couldn't imagine going through that, like, getting booed at home for beating the babe. I mean, I know that, you know, Babe Ruth obviously is an icon and the love like a God in New York, but dude, like stop being so mean to the guy. Jeez. It's your own player. <laughs> that is your own player. And it's funny. It's one of the things that they were talking about. You know, we, uh, you know, not only are you playing in the house that Ruth built, but you're playing his position and you're going for his record. That's true. And, and then you're hitting third, which was Ruth's spot because Back before they had num when they first had numbers, that's what your number one. So oh, was that right? Number was that number one. So they did it? Oh, I didn't know that. Ruth was hitting third and Gehrig was hitting fourth. Oh. And so that and then DiMaggio was hitting fifth because there's no way that you're gonna move two of the greatest hitters to ever play the game out. And then here comes Joe D. <laughs> so he's hitting fifth. And then you know, you got Mantle. It's like, oh, you get you got Mantle, I'm gonna be sixth. And that whole story about him getting sent down and just ready to give up was incredible. It's like, all right, cool. You'll come back to the, with, with me to Oklahoma and you'll work in the mines. Yeah. I don't want to work in the mines. What do you want to do? Do you want to play ball or do you want to come back and work? Let's go. Let's figure it out. Let's do it. Love it. Oklahoma. Shout out to Oklahoma. Um, Um, Yeah. I like, and I like the call out to the angels in this game. That was that was that their first year? I heard I heard that new, the new Los Angeles Angels. Is that their first they year? They were still home? playing at Wrigley. I don't think that Anaheim Stadium was built yet and they hadn't moved. And um, uh Walter O'Malley hadn't put a monopoly on the Los Angeles baseball scene yet to buy out the Angels mm. and get them out of his area. Interesting. Because Wrigley Field if I'm not mistaken, Wrigley Field was very close to the Coliseum. Oh, Wrigley Field? Yeah, Wrigley Field in Los Angeles was very close to the Coliseum. There was a Wrigley Field in Los Angeles? Yes. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, as much as I hate the Yankees today, excuse me, as much as I dislike the New York Yankees, um, I love what they mean for the history of baseball. Yeah. Especially this movie. You know, you got 
you got Ralph Hope talking about Gehrig, Ruth, DiMaggio, all of the greats. And here we are looking at Mickey Mantle at the end of his career and Roger Maris in one of the single greatest seasons ever, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And then one of the quotes, of course, that I love to hear is, if you can't have a good time playing baseball, there's something wrong with you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it was fun to, to kind of go down those rabbit holes of these players and talk to my kids about them because, you know, they, they've heard the names like they kind of heard Mickey Mantle, but, you know, went down that and explained like that dude was so good. Like one of the best, you know, center fielders of all time and um, switch hitter. He could do it all. Mickey Mantle could do it all. And, and I told him, like, you know, that's your, you know, that's your papa's you know favorite player. And I think a lot of a lot of boomers. I think from that were born like in that era, the late, you know, late 40 or in the 40s, you know, early 50s, you know, and Mickey Mantle coming up at that time. I think I, I've talked to a lot of people. I've heard a lot of like my dad's friends, and my mom's friends, like say, you know, that's that's their favorite player of all time. So he really came on, you know, good looking guy, great ball player, um, played for the Yankees, obviously the most popular team in America. Um, so he really was a big, you know, cultural icon for a lot of like the baby boomer generation. Yeah, it was he was one of the one of the greats, you know, greats. and I remember watching his funeral and thinking, why? Why is this such a big deal? I had no idea. Yeah. And uh, now understanding what he meant to the landscape of baseball at that time. Um, you know, there was a scene in the movie where Maris lays down a bunt and they score the winning run and the reporters are on him. You know, what about the record, Roger? What about the record? You're 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 not on pace to break to break Ruth's record. He goes, I'm not worried about the record. Yeah. I'm worried about winning the pennant because the year before Yankees won the pennant, they lose to the pirates on Mazeroski's walk-off. Oh, that's right. So I, was wondering, I couldn't remember what happened before. I didn't look it up. I couldn't remember. I knew they didn't win in 60, but that's what it was. Not okay. in 60. It was, it was such a lopsided series that every, the teams won every other game. And the Yankees' wins were blowouts, and the Pirates' wins were very close games. Mm. So I remember reading about that in the team that changed the game about the 1971 was it the 1971 1971 Pittsburgh Pirates, but also in the Clemente book where they go back and talk yeah. about a lot of that stuff. Um, yeah. Where does this movie rank for you, Jeff? Um, I might put it at the bottom half of the ten, maybe honorable mention area. I think um it's it's not top five but i i don't know i liked it i thought it was pretty good i, I might give like an honorable mention type uh record for or uh nomination for this one for me i'm not sure if it hits 10 if it hits 10 it'd probably be like number 10 11 12 honorable mention type area but it was really good i don't know did um billy crystal you said he did the other one that was in the 90s right this is his, was this his second movie that he did this was his second movie second that movie. he did yes I thought he did a great job. I thought, you know, it was a really well made movie. Um, has he done anything since, or is this his last one? Just not that two? I not that I could see. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was a good movie. I thought it was I thought it was really well done. Better, I think better than I thought it was gonna be. For those it was like an HBO movie. Sometimes those can be really hit or miss. You know, this wasn't I don't think this was released uh out in theaters. I'm pretty sure this was an HBO made movie. So um strictly for HBO, yeah. Yes. So, you know, a lot to, those could be hit or miss, man, you know. <laughs> Back back 20 some odd years ago, you never know with those. But yeah, I thought it was a really good movie. I, I would say honorable mention, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 11. What about you? Well, this sneaks into the top 10 for me, um, mostly because of the history aspect of it. Yeah. You know, there's two things that I had in this movie where, you know, Maris says this was the greatest season of my life and I would not want to do it again. <laughs> and uh after afterward where you know roger he goes to see mickey mantle in the in the playoffs or sorry in the hospital and mickey mantle says nobody can ever take that away and no matter what bullshit they tell you yeah. that record is yours asterisk or not and of course after he dies they take yeah. the asterisk away so messed you up. know and the the it's things stupid. that Faye vincent wanted to do especially to uh to get Pete Rose back in the game, back in a good standing, and then he dies, that was huge. So for me, this movie, of course, being a history buff, I loved it. Um, And that will transition us into 
the next trouble one. with the curve trouble with the curve released in 2012 starring mr clint eastwood himself mm, uh pretty sad. justin timberlake <laughs> also one of your favorites from nsync jt john goodman who the rat room really held the rug together um <laughs> Amy Adams, who was Lois Lane in the most recent Superman movies. Yeah, yeah that's Matthew, right. L- Matthew Lillard, who his first thing on IMDb was a Green. Scooby-Doo oh, movie. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, scroll all the way down on his IMDb. The first thing there was a Scooby-Doo movie. Really? I thought Scream was first. Yeah, he's done Scream. He was uh, in SLC Punk. Yep. Uh, he was in Hackers. I love and, I love Matthew Lillard. I think he's so great. He's and great. he was uh I feel like he was the real estate agent in Thirteen Ghosts. I don't know if I saw that one. Tony uh not Tony Shaloub. What is it, Tony Shaloub? Yes, Tony Shaloub. I know what you're and, about, uh, yeah. <clears throat> He was in a movie, he was in a show uh, my wife was watching, um, Bad Girls, I think it was called with uh oh god, I don't even know who's in it, but he's in it. <laughs> he plays one of the husbands. About the girls that are uh that are waitresses. No, uh, they they, they robbed true. banks or something or they sold drugs or something they like turned bad something like that or good girls bad girl. i can't remember what it was but yeah i remember seeing the previews for that after we would watch this is us um bob gutton as one of the firm's chairman uh he was in 61 and then paris from major yep. league he yep. was one of the scouts and directed by robert lawrence who also did mystic river oh i was wondering if this dude did anything <laughs> Um, this film, this movie was filmed mostly in Atlanta, uh, utilizing the Braves field at that time, Turner Field, which was one of my favorite parks to visit because of all the times that I'd seen games there. Mm. When I went, it was like my Graceland. Um, <laughs> what'd you think about Trouble with the Curve, Jeff? Yeah, I wasn't really feeling this movie. I didn't, I didn't think it was that great. Um, I thought they were trying too hard. Um, which is funny. I, I really like that director, I guess. Or well, I'm sorry, I don't really know much of him. I, I, I saw Mystic River, which I thought was a really good movie. I thought that was really well done. Uh, I didn't know he did he did that one also, but this one, a, you know, this one just didn't really do it for me. I mean, Clint is just he looks like he's got one foot in the grave. And it's just what 10 years ago. Is he still alive? I asked, I'm like, is he still alive? I think he is. Um, I don't know. I felt the movie tried to do too much. It tried to be a you know a, a father daughter movie it tried to be a comedy it tried to be a drama it tried to be a baseball movie it tried to be a road trip movie at one point like it felt like they were trying to do trying to hit too many genres for me and if they would have just stuck with one i would have liked to seen it as a road trip movie i think that this one would have really worked better if they really really would have leaned into the the father daughter relationship and gone on a road trip to scout all these different players or well, they don't scout on one player, but I think it would have been a better movie that way. Um, instead of trying to fit in a love story in the middle of it, which JT was just absolutely terrible in this movie. He was so bad. I mean, she clearly made it. She clearly said no, like that movie can't even be made this day today. You know what I mean? Like she made it very clear. She was not interested. She's like, no, no, no. And he kept pushing and pushing like that type of stuff. You can't make those movies anymore. So I just did not like his character at all. There was really, you know, I was telling my daughter after I'm like, and she watched it too. And I was telling her like, she's like, why didn't you like him dad? I'm like, cause he brought nothing. There was no point for him in this movie. It had nothing to do with him. Like he didn't move the narrative along. You know what I mean? If he wasn't in the movie, the movie would have been exactly the same. There was no need to, to what, to have a kissing scene at the very end. So Clint Eastwood could make a funny joke and oh, I guess I'm taking the bus. Like, that's literally the whole point for him to be in the movie, to send, say one joke at the end. So, well, not a big fan of this movie. Um, baseball scenes were okay, I guess. Um, I thought it was funny that John Goodman, seeing him, I, he's always great. John Goodman's great. You know, I asked, uh, we all watched this one, I think, my wife and, and two kids. So, you know, it was like, what is, well, I forgot where my daughter, my, my kid's like, oh, yeah, we know him. He's the voice of, uh, oh, that's right. They said he's the voice of uh, Scully. Was it Scully from Monsters, Inc.? That's he how they knew yes, him. He is. And I asked my wife, Billy hey, where Chris, you... look at that. We're no, Billy Crystal. Too. Yeah, there Billy you go. How funny. And so I asked my wife, where do you know him from? Where do you know John Goodman from? And she's like, Roseanne. And we both said the same number. Roseanne. That's where I, <laughs> John Goodman is Dan Connor. That's where I always know him from. Obviously, he's been. When he he's sat great. down in that chair when he's at Gus's apartment. Yeah. And he sits down in that chair and he turns the chair around. 
I was like, that's exactly how he would sit in Roseanne. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, how that's he would right sit. On. You know, he comes into the room and he turns his and he's around. big and yeah. 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 Uh, uh, John Goodman's great and everything. Amy Adams did her best. I don't know. It's just Clint, the whole, Clint Eastwood with the whole scowling and uh, it's like, I don't know. I just, it's just too much. It just got annoying for me. I don't know. What about you? What, what, what are your thoughts on it? I liked it and I can see why you didn't. You know, for me, this movie is sentimental because it's Atlanta. about a brave yeah. scout. And I'm a brave, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Figure I'm a brave fan. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the the things that are thrown in this movie. Tim Hudson won 17 games in 2010, so of course this movie was shot in 2011. Um, Paul Snyder, one of the best brave scout, one of the best scouts ever, uh, is the inspiration for Gus's character. And Snyder is known for signing two Hall of Famers, Chipper Jones and Tom Glavin. No. Um. Jair Jurgens did throw a one hitter against Baltimore in 2011. I remember that. I remember that. Um, so was you know, Clint Eastwood's character that guy? Is that who he's supposed to be? It's based on him. It's not okay. exact. Um, I don't know how things went with how everything changed. I know that at this time, things were starting to get into the computer, mm-hmm. computer-driven stats. Yeah. And we talked about Moneyball where, you know, you have the scouts that say you can only trust the computer so much. You can only trust the computer so much. And this movie, to me, shows how much you have to trust a scout, not based on the looks, but based on stuff that you can't find on a computer. How his hands drift, how he hits a fastball, how the ball Mm -hmm. comes off his bat, stuff like that. Um, When they throw uh, Rigo in at the end. And how he blows fastballs by him, and then he blow, you know, he, he just fools him with a curveball. Yeah, he knows it's coming. He can't even he can't even hit it. He right. knows it's coming. Um, so Rigo was played by Jay Galloway, who was a standout football and baseball player in Atlanta. Got the call for this. I I think at most he played football in college. Hmm. Um, for me, this movie is good. It's an honorable mention. It's not top 10 but because of all the brave stuff because of the baseball history quizzes that timberlake and amy adams give each other that to me definitely it's like all right cool you know there's four players that have hit three home runs in a world series game besides reggie jackson there's he's one of them reggie jackson he's one is there is there any recent no david freeze only had two there Mm -hmm. is there is two recent and they happen in consecutive years what year 2011, 2012. That's uh, Rangers and Giant. Oh, is it pa- uh, Sandoval? Pablo Sandoval in 2012. 2011. It's got to be a, a Giant. That'd be a Texas. Somebody in Texas or Cardinals? Texas and St. Louis. And, yeah. It's not David Freeze, right? He only hit two. No, Freeze hit two. Pujols. It's not Pujols. I don't think it's Pujols. It is. Albert it is? Pujols. Well, it was three Pujols. home runs in Texas. Oh, wow. And then, of course, the man himself, Mr. Babe Ruth. Of course. We can't um, with you. Yeah. I didn't really like the Bo Gentry character at all. No, you know, God, he was so bad. Me, it was, he was so bad. He was so obnoxious. He didn't even look like a baseball <laughs> He like he couldn't, run. He, he couldn't run. He, oh, he's a five-tool player. Dude can't run. I Which is funny. Field. But yeah, right. Five-tool my ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which is funny, you know. That, that actually, it's funny that we mentioned that, like the looks of him, right? He was kind of doughy, not fat. I guess you'd say that's a little harsh. He was a little doughy. How about that? But, you know, going back to that, the, you know, the money ball connection and how the analytics versus the scouts, you know, that's that's obviously a money ball thing. And that was heavily, uh, you know, focused in this movie where the Matthew Lillard character and his his lackeys were, they didn't even bother looking at the the player. They just saw the stats, whereas obviously Clint Eastwood's out there seeing them and gives them, you know, his hand strip and whatever. But um, you know, it's it's interesting because in Moneyball, the big thing is like I don't care what they look like. I don't. We're not selling jeans. You know what I mean? So you know, in Moneyball, the big thing is this fat catcher. They that's what they say. I'm not calling him fat. They call him the fat catcher. It's m- mentioned many times. I forgot uh, something Brown. I think his last name is Brown. I can't remember his first name right now. But and they drafted him. And um, you know, they're like the whole big thing. The scouts are like, no, this dude's too big. He's not gonna hold up his catcher. And, da, da, da. and he never made the major leagues, but um, you know, he made up triple A. But um, you know, the whole thing was it doesn't matter what they look like in their uniform, it matters, you know, their production. So, you know, that, that's kind of funny that 
the guy that they picked for this movie who was all about the scouts didn't look good in his uniform. He is more of a the way he looks. It's more of a money ball analytical type guy because you don't you can just see the numbers and see. And whereas, you know, if you're in the obviously you're scouting him, you're seeing what he looks like. But um, yeah, I don't know. It was he he was he was obnox- obnoxious and <laughs> and I don't know. I just think that, OK, his hands drift he's 17, 18 years old. We can't fix that. Like, I don't know. Isn't that what they do in the minors? Like to fix but not on a number issues? one pick. You're not, yeah. gonna, you're not going to do that on a number one pick where it's like, oh, his hands drift. Well, what do you mean? We can work on that. Yeah, but I don't want to waste a number one pick. Mm. The face of the franchise, you know, it's, he, they're talking about the pitcher out of San Diego. I wonder if that was Strasburg. Oh, Oh yeah, that was he was drafting eleven, right? Or was it oh nine? He uh, was no. drafted pretty close. That's so true. Oh, that's we'll, interesting. We'll revisit that. I'll bet. Oh, that must be because um, that I didn't even make that connection. Yeah, I'll bet you. Steven yeah, Strasburg just retired this week. Just retired yeah, this right? week. Just too. retired. Had a had a fair career. Yeah. Played for Tony Gwynn at San Diego State. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you know the sisters of the blind could hit the ball out with an aluminum bat, right, Jeff? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> aluminum bat yeah i don't yeah the aluminum bat thing that's funny it's funny that they do that in college still I, yeah one of the things that i laughed about when i saw this was you know the hotel the little motel that they pull into mm-hmm. where the sign says uh you know vacancy lowest rats in town yeah yeah <laughs> that's good um i like the uh you know, I like how they pointed out the good quote that I had in this one was, you know, to hit the magic 300, you have to fail seven out of 10 times, you know, and anybody who's listening doesn't realize that, you know, that's, you know, baseball is about failure. You know, that is baseball. You're going to fail more often than not. That's just more the often than not. statistics of the game. Like you're literally you're doing good if you only fail <laughs> you know, seven out of 10 times, like you're considered good, you know, so it, it's crazy the way baseball and stats work. And now I think that just goes to show how hard it is too. You know, to make it in baseball where you're failing seven out of ten times and you're considered good. It's just it's crazy when you hear it put that way. And every bat is under a microscope and everything. You want to succeed at every turn of mm-hmm. the game. And it stinks when you can't, because guess what? You want to and you show that you want to, but it's not gonna happen every time. Yep. You know, maybe maybe you'll get a piece of it. Maybe, maybe you'll put a little bit of wood on it, but you're not gonna you're not going to hit the ball seven out of 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> so not even four out of 10. So not even four out of 10, you know, very rarely are you going to get somebody like that. Even, um, Luis Arise. He was right. He got, Marlins. he was there, but he's fall. I think he's down to three fifty now. He's down to, th- as of what I saw last night, he's at three forty something. Oof. Freeman's right behind him. And yeah. Acuna is right behind him. Yeah. And that is definitely going to be big talk over the next month because, I think so too. We're in the last month of the season, and you've got four people vying for MVP on two teams. I think it's Acuna. My vote is Acuna, but we'll see if he comes 30 and 60? Because... That's insane, dude. I know Mookie's right now. 30 and 60, and he now, hits but... a grand slam. Dude, 30 and 60. That's, I mean, that's historical. Yeah, how was the game last night? You went, you were at the Dodger-Atlanta game. Um, I was at the game. Got a couple of... Uh, couple of people on video Darius Vines made his first start the night before in Colorado he is from Oxnard oh. Michael Harris saw that. he is from Georgia he's a brave center fielder and Jerry Hairston Jerry Hairston Dodger great <laughs> Dodger great came up with the uh I forget who he came up with but his Pirates? dad played for the White Sox okay and uh I want to say Pirates yeah I'm not sure I got him on there uh, great game. You know, we had batting practice passes, got to meet Reed Johnson, Chris Taylor. Uh, nice. Where can we find those interviews, Nick? Just, hey, can I ask you these questions? Are you cool with that? Yeah, nice. let's go. Why not? Check what out does our... it hurt? If you don't try, you're never going to know. There you go. Check out our Twitter feed, the Jeff at Jeff and Nick Show, to see those interviews. Twitter, Instagram. I will post them on YouTube. I will share them. Right on at Jeff and Nick show. At Jeff and Nick show. Next week, we will be discussing a pair of Disney films. Million Dollar Arm and get, The Rookie. Get the Kleenex ready. Get the tears. I'm going to start crying. Feel my, I can feel it watering up already. 
<laughs> oh, trouble with have... the curve had me. Trouble with the curve had me. I, yeah. I have the sentimental part of it locked in. I love Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I love Clint Eastwood. I especially love when Martin McFly says his name is Eastwood. <laughs> Mr. Um, Eastwood. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Eastwood. What are you doing this far without a hat? <laughs> yeah. My kids were like, wait, who is that? What's that name? They're like, we know that name. Like, yeah, Back to the Future. They're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Clint Eastwood uh, in his Western movies. That's I'm a big Clint Eastwood man with no name Western movies. The rest of uh, the rest of his uh, his his uh, filmography I could take or leave. If right. you're looking for a good Clint Eastwood movie that's not a Western movie, aside from Mystic River, I recommend watching Firefox. Okay. Uh, the, it's the, a spy. It's spy. a spy movie. Yeah. Is that with the plane? The I believe the, yeah. The, the the what do you call it? The Blackbird plane, right? They hijack a Russian plane. Sorry, that sounds familiar. Yeah. I feel like I might have seen that. Yeah. I forgot Clint Eastwood directed. No, wait. No, he didn't. He, wait, who directed Mystic River? I believe he did. That's right. We will revisit that next week. Thank you, everybody. All Jeff, right. Nick. Until episode eight, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you for welcoming me to the 40s. All right. <laughs> have a good one, everybody. Thank you.